So let's tune in together and just come into this space and create our own energetic space and just really feel the vibration of the tune in in our body. So I challenge you today as we tune in, maybe even scanning the body as you chant and see where in the body is being vibrated. Maybe it's the center of the head, maybe it's the heart. Maybe you feel it, the vibration traveling all the way down the front of your body, right through the vagus nerve. It was so fascinating. We had this surgeon um, come and talk to the teacher trainers yesterday. And uh, he's a Kundalini yoga and a, you know, a doctor, a surgeon. So he was explaining all the glands and you know, how the vibrations and the pituitary and the pineal, and it was just so fascinating. So just see if you can tap into your own experience of that with the tune in. So we begin by rubbing the palms of the hands. Pushing the palms together into prayer pose, the thumbs come <clears throat> pressed into the sternum right there on the vagus nerve. Your eyes are closed, focused at the third eye point. The shoulders are back, the chest is lifted. It's about five pounds of pressure on the palms of your hands, so it's an active, engaged prayer pose. Taking a deep inhale to exhale. And deep inhale to tune in. Oh. of the vibration, exhale, inhale. I'm good ain't a man, you got good ain't a man, sat good ain't a man, city good day ain't a man. I good ain't a man, you got good ain't a man, sat good ain't a man, city guru day ain't a man. I good ain't a man, you got good ain't a man, sat good ain't a man, city guru day ain't a man. Deep inhale, hold the breath in. Apply Mulaban root lock, squeeze. And exhale slowly, relax the hands down on the knees. Finding a natural breath. Feeling in, relaxing into this tune in. And together, taking a deep inhale. Sign it out. 
one more time. Deep inhale. Open the mouth, sigh it out. You can keep your breath nice and slow. You can slowly open your eyes. And I just wanted to check in and see where you felt that. Like if you did notice, it's okay if you didn't, but um, if you noticed somewhere in the body that vibrated for the tune in, or maybe you noticed something that activated or something that shifted, or maybe your focus or attention was just on a certain area of the body. Right? It's good to just reflect right, on your own experience. It's so unique um, and it's fun to share. So that maybe you are just engaged a little bit more in the dristi, which is good because that's that is like a mudra, right? That's a yoga pose of the eyes, so that's great. It should feel a little uncomfortable, right? Because you're actually engaged so much so, but if you've been doing it for a long time, it's a little bit easier. It gets easier, I think. Nice. I could feel my immune system getting stronger. Oh, that's a good feeling. Yeah. We all need a little immunity boost. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Wow, what does that feel like? Oh, it feels like? like, you know, I'm over the flu, I'm over this, I'm over that, and uh, and it came out on the other end a little stronger. Amazing. Nice. Today. Wow, that's good to hear. Yeah. <laughs> Great. went through like every body system um, and basically what he shared with us he said he doesn't try to fit yoga into um, medical through the medical lens he tries to fit the medical view into yoga which was really interesting for a surgeon to say um, but his reasoning, you know, and he said this very lightheartedly and totally humbly. He's like, you know, yoga has been practiced for thousands and thousands of years, right? Some of these traditions, um, including Kundalini. Uh, and the thing is that we've been practicing the poses and some of the philosophy have not changed at the core. But medical, right, in the medical field, in the medical world, right, what, a couple hundred years, we've been practicing Western medicine. And from, you know, last year to this year, they've proved probably half of the medical research wrong or found new research. And so it's just constantly changing. So for him, he's saying, you know, I'm very humble and I understand that we're doing so much research and we're learning so much more in this medical field. So we're not attached onto anything. Right? We have to have an open mind and we have to see all the different changes. He said that one of his mentors said, if I'm practicing, you know, the same thing 20 years ago, like I'm, I must be wrong. I'm doing something wrong. Right. So it's interesting. And so he instead takes some of the yoga philosophies and, um, and then he'll try to fit the medical views into the yoga and see, see and just sees if it matches. So it's interesting. We talked about the nerves. We talked about the Ida and the Pingala and the Shushma, uh, the Shushuma, which is the central channel, and you know how that really mirrors the uh, 
the spinal column, right? And he, yeah, the shashuma, which is the central channel, energetic channel in the body uh, that really connects all the chakras, right? It connects all of our energy. It's what, you know, kundalini yogis believe what the uh, kundalini will rise up. And in his, it was really interesting. He said that the cerebral spinal fluid, it's this like kind of dark fluid that surrounds all of the uh, mechanisms of the spinal column and it goes all the way up, right? Comes up to the brainstem and surrounds all of the brain matter too, the cerebral spinal fluid. He believes his, um, his hypothesis is that maybe that is the physical parallel to what the kundalini would come up in. I'm like, oh, interesting. Yeah. So all the spinal flexes, everything that we do with the spine is, you know, facilitating that movement. And it's just really fascinating. Yeah. There's so much. I'll share some more later. But today, you know, we're going to talk about not so much the physical. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit about dharma versus karma and i know we were talking about right you get this calling and then what's the next step um you feel like you know you're meant to do something you're you know you're meant to serve or you you have this breadcrumb right about your dharma but how do you stay in that and so first we have to kind of understand right how how we're made, right? What are we made out of? What what is this, right? And I like to just imagine, right? If this is the oneness, or spirit, you know, whatever word you want to use, and then we are this sweet little droplet that comes off of the oneness, right? We each are our own little droplets, maybe. And each droplet, right, has all of the genetic coding, all of the blueprints, all of um, the experiences, all of the dharma, right, all of the purpose. It's all contained, right? It's like a seed. So it has everything. So it has everything. Everything that you're meant to experience in this lifetime, you have, right? You have. It's all there. But then we also have free will. <laughs> right? So you have your blueprints, you have your dharma, and then you have free will. And so then it all kind of mixes together into your, you know, unique uh, expression of this oneness, right? Into you, into me, and then we get to interact. And then each time we interact, each time we think, have a thought, each time we do an action, um, the blueprints and, you know, the software of the entire universe is like updating. So it's like such an intelligent uh, process, right? We can't even really wrap our minds around it, <laughs> um, but it's so, so amazing. And so each of us, right, are made up of this dharma. And then we have these deep driving desires, right, that come from our dharma. And sometimes they come from the ego. And then sometimes they come from the soul, which is the dharma, right? So we don't know. Sometimes we don't know which is feeding into which. That's also the work, the deep listening. And then from the deep driving desires, right, we get a chance to use our willpower. And then we take an action. And then that action leads to either fate or destiny. Fate being karma and destiny being dharma. And uh, a lot of the yogis would say, if you're in your dharma, there is no karma anymore. Because karma, do we know what karma is? I just want to kind of hear what, you, what your definition of karma is. And it's so, it's used like, so much. Right? So. Well, the results of what your actions are. Right. Right, like the consequences. Not meaning a bad consequence, but just good or bad. Yeah, good or bad. Yeah, that's basically what it is. And it doesn't have to be, karma doesn't have to be punishment. It's, I think of it as almost like a redirecting, right? So you do something and then a karma will come up to redirect and rebalance. And so 
you're like constantly like rebalancing on this like seesaw, right? Until the choices that you're making, right? The thoughts that you're thinking and the words that you're speaking are so aligned with who you are, right? With what you're meant to experience, with your purpose, right? They're so aligned that all of a sudden your actions aren't tipping the scale one way. They're not tipping the scale this way. The actions are not moving the scale anymore, right? So everything you do is keeping the scale exactly at the balance point, which is a cool feeling. And then there's no karma, right? The karma is the movement, right? The rebalancing, not good or bad, but just consequences, effects. So dharma is no effects. So it's that, it's that balance, right? So when, there's, when you're in dharma, there's no karma. It's the neutral state, but it's also the fulfilled state. It's also, right, right. You're just, you're in your destiny, but it's almost, it's also like, you're not really in your destiny. You are your destiny, right? There's a difference. You're in karma, right? Karma is the cycle, right, of, of actions, and then consequences, and you're in that cycle. That's karma. When you're in your dharma, you're no longer in that. You're just, you just exist, right, at that neutral state, but you are that, right? That is you. This, you are your dharma. The karma is everything that's like attached onto you that's like keeping you out of balance. So that's why you can like let go of karma, you can clear karma, you can um, transcend karma, right? You can play out the karma, you can do something and then it, uh, it balances the karma, right? And it will like cancel it out, <laughs> right? So the karma is not you, the dharma is you. So when you are in your dharma, when you're in your purpose, all that really means is you are being exactly who you're meant to be and authentically expressing yourself in every moment, with every word, with every thought, with every action. And that's something that we always like get hung up on, right? We're like, we have to find our purpose. We have to find our career. We have to find, you know, what we have to do. Um, but really that just means being who you are and then everything aligns, right? Everything is here in this place, but when you're out of balance, you, you can't receive anything. It just falls away. It's a lot. But this is where we get to affect it, right? At the free will. And so this is where we get to play the game. This is where we get to play the game of moving from karma to dharma, because we have will. And the will is directly connected to the nervous system. Right? If we don't have a strong nervous system, then how can we apply our will in every moment right, to actually balance out and transcend, rise above karma, break out of this cycle? Because this is a lot, this is very comfortable too. It's super comfortable. <laughs> it's just kind of, woo. <laughs> but we get to use our will. And so that's what we're going to do today. We're going to activate our will. We're going to activate the solar plexus a little bit and uh, energize and really ask ourselves, right, what is the next breadcrumb? What's the next action that I can take that can take me out of karma, right? That can move me towards my highest self. What is the action that my soul wants to experience, right? Not my ego. What does my soul, what's the soul's deep driving desire? Not the ego's deep driving desire. The ego will take you into karma. The soul will take you into dharma. So it's like how we just get all mixed up in there. But it's pretty clear, right? You just got to do some deep listening. But we all like to do that here. So we're going to do some deep listening. We'll work with 
<clears throat> a mantra that can connect us to our destiny. And we'll just um, we'll just be with ourselves today. Yay! Any comments, questions? It's fun pretty stuff. good the way it, the way you have it filtered down there, one side to the other. That's definitely very clever. Yeah, it's kind of a fun little chart. I feel like it's, it, and it's all, you know, it can all be worded differently and it could be, you know, cyclical, it could be a pie chart. I mean, <laughs> you know, it's just frameworks, but it helps because the mind wants some frameworks. <laughs> if we can get the mind on board a little bit, then we can trick the mind and then let the soul be in charge, <laughs> like hijack the mind. <laughs> the mind thinks it's like, oh yeah, 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 I get this. I can, I can adhere to this. And then all of a sudden, boom, the soul comes into the body and we're in deep meditation and we're like, yeah, we don't need you right now. <laughs> I'm gonna do some deep listening. I don't need any framework. I'm just in total zero stillness. So let's get there <laughs> or try. The whole process. All right, so <clears throat> let's come sitting up. We'll close our eyes. We'll just flip the hands, palms facing up, maybe placing the fingers in Gyan Mudra, starting to slow down the breath. And just reflecting right, on your own existence just for a moment. I know that's a big reflection question. But reflecting on your piece of the puzzle. your little water droplet, right? The little droplet that came from the ocean that's still the ocean, but is so unique. Right? The seed of your existence that has all the blueprints, all the codes, all the deep driving desires that your soul, your purest, truest essence, wants to experience in this life. The good and the bad experiences, the pleasurable and the painful experiences. Keep breathing, slow down your back. Just thinking about this vast, right, this expansive, this infinite technology inside of you, right? Physically, emotionally, energetically. We'll set the intention today that we just want to feel that. We just want to tap into that. We want to, we want to peak. We'll begin to bring some movement into the body with some neck rolls. Starting to rotate the head in big circles. Opening up that connection from the brain stem to the spinal column. Inhaling maybe as your head comes to one side, exhaling as it drops to the other side. And switching directions. 
Really feeling that rotation, stretching all the way down the spine. Taking a deep inhale, center. Sigh it out. Beautiful. Flipping the hands on the knees. We'll come into Sufi grinds, bringing that rotation down to the base of the spine. You can shift off of a pillow if you are on a pillow. Mm. Inhaling as you come forwards. Exhale as you round the spine back. Inhaling forwards, exhaling back. Really leading with the heart. So the chest is coming all the way up, lifted, and then rounding the spine back. Deep in your breath. We're really waking up the spine, right? The shushuma, that central channel. Waking up the channel both physically and energetically. Taking a deep inhale, center. Exhale. Switching directions. Inhaling forwards, exhaling back. Really feeling that flex of the spine. Deep in your breath. And deep inhale, center. Exhale. Coming onto your hands and knees. We'll come into some classic cat cow. Inhale, the head comes up, dropping the belly down to the ground. Exhale, round the spine up, tuck the chin. Inhaling, lifting the head, dropping the belly. Exhale, rounding the spine up, tucking the chin to the chest. Going at your own pace. Maybe visualizing, imagining that cerebral spinal fluid, right? Kind of being moved and massaged. Moving all the way up the spine to the brain. Maybe you can visualize the energy, right? The flow of the energy too. Really deepening your breath. Use the breath here. Thank you. 
last few moments. See if you can speed up the pace. Go as fast as you can while keeping the integrity of the breath to movement ratio. So keep the breath deep, full, but move as fast as you can with the breath. And deep inhale, exhale, stay in your hands and knees. This time starting to wag your tail left and right, just wagging the hips left and right, nice and slow, feeling this different type of stretch as you move the spine left and right. You're just wagging your tail. You feel the curve of your spine, right? You can feel your entire spine curving. Keep the breath going. And as you wag your tail, you can maybe visualize the energy starting to wake up even more. And then shift this rotation, shift this movement to come up to your head so your head starts to lead this. So it's more of a snake-like motion. Nice, engaging your neck. Deep inhale, center. Exhale, pushing back. Tailbone to your heels, forehead comes down to the ground. Walk the fingertips forwards. <clears throat> Breathe here. <clears throat> Deep inhale. Exhale, push up, sitting onto your heels. You can place a pillow underneath if that's more comfortable. Nice. And then we're going to lift our arms up to 60 degrees, right? Tracing the outline of our arc line. The fingertips come tucked into the pads of the palms. The thumbs are engaged. Literally plugged into this arc line, right? Into our work field. And we'll start Breath of Fire. Eyes are closed, focus on the third eye point. Powerful breath in and out. Equal parts in, equal parts out. Focus on the exhale. The inhale will come naturally. Feeling that navel point coming in and up every time you exhale. See if you can relax your face as you do this. Maybe shifting your awareness to that navel center, right? The center where our willpower originates.
the solar plexus where we take action the place where we can exercise our free will to consciously move from fate into destiny, right? From karma to dharma. We're strengthening our nervous system right now. Right now in this moment. So feel how powerful that is. That choice that you're making right now to strengthen your nervous system. To feel your strength. To consciously rewire and strengthen that kind of electrical circuiting through the body so we can handle things that happen in life, so we can process things, so we can redirect energy, expand energy. Like keeping this physical body, keeping our physiology in great shape. Not just health wise, but great shape energetically to hold, to hold the essence of our soul. Almost there. Last few seconds, keep the thumbs engaged, elbows straight, arms at 60 degrees. Keeping the arms up deep, inhale, hold the breath in. Apply root lock mulaban, squeeze, squeeze. Keep the arms up, exhale. Deep inhale. Hold the breath in. Apply root lock. Squeeze. Keep the arms up. Exhale. Deep inhale. Bring the thumbs above your head touching. Reach the fingertips up. Sip in a little more air. Stretch up, up, up. Exhale and slowly, as slow as possible, lower the arms down the sides, tracing your auric field. Bringing the hands finally onto the knees, palms facing up. I need a natural breath through the nose. Feeling your own energy. Feeling where you're at. Now fully in your body with a little bit of mental clarity. Just asking yourself, you know, what's the karma in your life? What are you working with right now that you can let go of, that you can balance out? That you can bring to conclusion And not looking at it as punishment or anything bad, but just as a way, as the gateway, right? Your karma is your gateway. It's your door to go through to reach your dharma. So having a little gratitude for it. 
and just realizing that's your access point. Your karma is your access point. It tells you what you need to do, where to apply the will, the free will, the action, the right action to bring you into a state of balance, neutrality, alignment. Taking a deep inhale. Exhale. And then very slowly starting to come up into a standing position. <coughs> We'll take a deep inhale, reaching the hands up. Exhale, reach over to the right side, bringing the right fingertips down the right leg. Inhale up, both arms stretching. Exhale, left arm comes down, stretch over the left side, left fingertips come down the leg. Inhale, both arms come up. Mm. Exhale, lean back a little bit. Inhale, reach up center. Exhale, forward fold. Just hang for a few moments. Keep a slight bend in the knees. Let the head relax. Relax the lower back. Inhale, halfway lift, flat back. Exhale, forward float, fold all the way down to the floor, palms touching the ground. And then inhale, slowly roll up. Beautiful, grounding yourself, making sure the feet are about hip distance apart. The shoulders are back, the chest is lifted, and the arms come now out to the sides. The thumbs are pointing upwards. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And then we'll close the eyes and we'll begin breath of fire. Feeling the navel pumping every time you exhale. Eyes are focused at the third eye point. And the shoulders are pulled back a little bit, so you keep the chest lifted. You're pulling the arms back just slightly, keeping that chest and heart lifted. Beautiful. Relaxing the face. strengthening the nervous system. Any arm positions are really strengthening the nervous system. Activating that vagus nerve. This is almost like a, an electrical response that we're creating in the body. Mm -hmm. 
And then at the same time, the same time we're really preparing the body, right? We're creating the right environment for us to exert the will whenever we need to. We're also meeting the ego. We're also meeting the mind right now. We're doing that deep listening, that deep self-reflection. And we're asking the questions. What thoughts are coming from the ego? What thoughts are coming from the soul? What does the ego want me to experience in this moment? What does the soul want me to experience? Almost there. And taking a deep inhale, slowly lifting the hands up overhead, thumbs come touching. Hold the breath in, slowly arc back. And then exhale, forward fold. Keep a slight bend in the knees, let the head hang. Find a few natural breaths here. Let the energy drip down your fingertips, balancing the head and the heart. Deep inhale through the nose. Exhale, bending your knees all the way so it touches your chest, and then bringing your tailbone down to the floor. Bringing your feet out, spreading your legs into a V. If you need to use a strap, you can use a strap here, or if you just wanna grab wherever you can you know, reach. You don't have to touch the toes if you can't touch the toes. But if you can, grabbing your left toe, bringing your head down to your knee or wherever it goes, relaxing the head down, and then starting breath of fire. <laughs> Beautiful. Letting the neck relax, letting the head fall. Feeling the stretches, feeling whatever the posture wants you to feel. Experiencing it without judgment. And using the breath. Relax the neck. Relax into the stretch. See, wherever you notice little tiny places of discomfort, see if you can relax into that place. See if you can surrender into that.
And deep inhale, raising the head, flat back. Exhale, forward fold all the way completely down. Inhale, come up to center. Exhale, come to the other side. Again, grabbing the toe if you can. The head relaxes down, beginning breath of fire. Relax the neck. Keep the breath going. Surrendering, relaxing into any discomfort. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, center. Lean back a little. Counter stretch that. Shake out the legs. Maybe even tapping the legs a little bit, giving them some love. Beautiful. And then we're going to come onto our bellies. And it's your choice. You can either make fists with your hands or you can place your hands flat right underneath your thighs. The fist, it might be a little bit better because it gives you a little bit more of a lift and some help and you can rotate your fist so it gives you a little bit more of a lift. Yeah, right under your thighs. And then we're going to inhale through the nose, lifting the legs straight back. So keeping the knees straight, toes are pointed. Keep the legs up, exhale completely. And then apply Mulaban root lock. Squeezing the rectum, sex organs, navel in and up, squeezing. And here, you're going to hold as long as you can. So the breath is held out. You're applying root lock. You hold for as long as you can. When you can't hold your breath or the lock or the legs any longer, you inhale deeply. Exhale, relax the legs down just for a moment. And then you continue the cycle. Deep inhale, lift the legs as high as you can. Hold. Exhale completely. Apply root lock. Hold the breath out, hold the lock. Keep the legs up for as long as you can. Hold the breath in for as long as you can. Apply the lock. Listening to your body when it's time to inhale and then lower the legs. You 
can keep your chin on the floor if it helps support you. Really lifting your legs as high as possible. And when you exhale, you want to push all the air out and then apply that root lock. Squeezing the rectum, sex organs, navel. Really squeezing, challenging yourself to keep the legs up, to keep the lock, to hold the breath out for as long as you can. Feel the navel point pressing into the floor as you do this. It's like you're pressing the button on your solar plexus. You're activating your willpower in life and to do this posture. Keep going, we're almost there. Amazing work. Don't stop. This is you and your practice, right? You get to choose the length of time here. This is your will, this is your choice. I feel empowered in that. There's no self-judgment. There's only excitement, right? This is your free will. It's exciting. Last few seconds. Keep the legs up. You can do it last few seconds. We're all here together. And exhale, lower. Deep inhale and exhale, bringing the hands out from under you, turning the face to one side. Rest here. Breathe. Breathe. Deep inhale, switch sides, turn to the opposite direction, opposite cheek to the floor. Beautiful. Breathe here. And then slowly moving your hands up to shoulder level, palms down on the floor. Taking a deep inhale. 
exhale. Inhaling, pushing up. First, bringing the chest up in a half cobra. Feeling the pelvic floor actually pressing down into the ground so you can actually lift your hands up a little bit. So the hands come off the ground and you can feel your chest is still lifted, right? You want the abs to be doing the work, not the arms. Good. You can place the hands back down onto the ground. Lift up a little bit higher. So wherever you can, coming into full cobra. Beautiful. Deep inhale here. Exhale completely. Apply root lock mulaban on the exhale. Squeeze the rectum, sex organs, navel in and up. Hold the breath out. Apply the root lock. Hold this as long as possible. When you can't hold, you take a deep inhale. Release the lock. Exhale. Apply root lock. Hold. Hold as long as possible. And then continue this cycle of inhaling, exhaling completely, applying that root lock. Eyes are focused at the third eye point. If this hurts your lower back, you can come down to half cobra. You can come down whenever it starts to hurt. You listen to your body. You can come onto the forearms. Continue to press the pelvic floor bone down into the ground. It takes out some of that pressure in the lower back. Focus the eye dristi at the third eye point, that place of our intuition that helps us see which breadcrumbs to follow, which action to take next that can help us come into our dharma. You're doing amazing. Keep the chest lifted. Keep the heart open. Again, see what your soul wants you to experience here. If it's the ego that's keeping your arms up, or if it's the soul. There's no judgment. This is your experience. Right? If you need to come onto the forearms, you do that. You ask yourself, what is the deep driving desire of my ego? What is the deep driving desire of my soul in this moment? Almost there. When you apply the mulaban, when you apply the root lock, really feel your energy. Feel the energy gather. Feel the energy direct it up. Finishing your last round, and then your next inhale, exhaling down onto your belly. Turning to one side. Breathing here nice and slow. Consciously relax the lower back. 
Relax the muscles. Breathe here. Deep inhale. Exhale, turn the head to the opposite side, opposite cheek on the floor. Beautiful. Breathe here. Shoulder level again. Deep inhale. Exhale, slowly push up. Push back. Come into a seated position. And you're just going to watch me for a quick second before you do this. We're going to come onto our backs. And then we're going to lift the legs up straight into the ground. And we're going to come into any variation of a shoulder stand that we can, supporting our hips with our hands. Once we're in a shoulder stand, we're going to take three deep inhales. On the third exhale, hold the breath out. And then alternately, kick your butt with your heels for as long as you can while holding root lock. When you can't hold this for any longer, you take a deep inhale, legs are straight. Two more inhales on the third exhale, hold that breath out, apply root lock, kick again for as long as you can. Okay. Okay. So exhale, root lock, Yes. So coming onto your backs. <laughs> you can do it. <laughs> All right. Beautiful. All right. Lifting those legs up perpendicular to the floor. Shimmying the hands underneath that lower back right on the hips. Supporting the hips up. So you're in a straight line. Right. All your weight is being held on the shoulders. Taking three breaths. Yep, three breaths. Deep inhale and exhale, deep inhale and exhale. Deep inhale and exhale. On that third exhale, you hold the breath out, apply root lock, and then start to alternately kicking the buttocks. Oh, 
ankle and then you start that same rotation again. Three breaths on the third exhale. Pull the breath out, apply root block, alternately kicking. <laughs> Letting the mantra. Letting the mantra give you strength. The mool mantra. to slowly lower your legs down, vertebrae by vertebrae, rolling the spine finally down, and then dropping the legs down to the floor, flipping the palms facing up to the ceiling, letting the eyes relax. Rest here. Deep inhale, sigh it out. Ah. 
Inhale, bring the knees to your chest. Exhale, squeeze the knees. Begin to rock front and forward along the spine. Come up into a seated position, crossing your legs into easy pose. And then we're gonna come right back down onto our backs, but keep your legs in easy pose. Slowly lower your backs down. So your line all the way back. And then bring your hands in Venus pose right at your navel center, interlacing the fingers. Beautiful. Closing your eyes. And then meditate on your third eye point. Mm. Beautiful. Letting this mantra enter every cell of your body. Ekonkar, me and the universe, we are one. I am a part of that oneness, that spirit. Satnam, my truest identity is that I am part of that oneness. But at the same time, I have a unique nam. I have a unique blueprint of what my soul wants to experience in this lifetime. Kartapurik, God, the universe, source is the doer of everything. I trust that. I understand that. I know the plan. Nirbor. God is fearless and I too am fearless. Nirver. God has no revenge or ill will. Neither do I. Akal Murat. God and I, we are undying. Ajuni, God is unborn. Right. God, source divine, doesn't exist in the cycle of karma. There is no dying or birth. That oneness, that spirit that I am a part of, transcends death and birth. Sai Bang. God is self illuminated. I am self illuminated. I am light. I am powerful. I can exist totally in my sovereignty. Guru Prasad, it is by the Guru's grace, by the teachings, that I can connect to this truth. Jap, meditate on this, repeat this, live this. Adasach, true in the beginning, Jugad Sach, true throughout all the ages. Habi such true here and now. Feel that truth. Ekonka 
taking a deep inhale, exhaling. Another deep inhale, side out. And on your back, starting to chant along with a mantra, this mo mantra. Feeling the nod enter your body. Juga such a baby, such a Continue chanting. The hands are in Gyan Mudra, the index finger and the thumbs are touching. You have a slight mulaban, a slight root lock, and you're chanting. Such a Juga. Ah, 
saja juga saja abi saja aneka hosi bi ini saja deep inhale hold the breath in i relax Exhale, release the lock. I need a natural breath. seeing this week today especially today if you can become the observer of your life and start to watch in full presence of the magnitude of the power that every action every word and every thought that originates from you has allowing yourself to see the bigger picture to become aware to be conscious of the karma that is created or of the actions and the words and the thoughts that don't create karma that are so in alignment with your dharma that they keep perfect zero point. They don't add anything. That they just keep you on track. And I'm challenging you to look at any karmas that you're currently working with, not as a negative, but as the access point the gateway to rebalance, to come into Dharma, into your unique experience, into your Nam, and doing this with deep listening, deep listening, deep listening, deep discernment. Deep inhale, exhaling. Bringing the hands to prayer pose. Closing with three long sat nams together. Sending out our unique nam, our unique dharma out with our voice. Sending our vibration out projecting out who we are. That's all that we can do. Deep inhale to begin. So No. 
Sanaa, left long. Sanaa.